TV. Rogers TV North Durham Kawartha acknowledges that we are situated on the Mississauga lands and the traditional territory covered by the Williams Treaties. We are grateful for the opportunity to work here and we thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. We also recognize the contributions of Métis, Inuit and other Indigenous peoples both in shaping and strengthening this community and country as a whole. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers Cable or Rogers TV. Welcome to Modern Business, the show that bridges the gap between the viewer and the entrepreneur or market maker. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and today we are joined by Shane Pasquino of Pasquino Productions, based in the Kawartha Lake, specializing in videography. Here to talk all about his business, please welcome Shane. Now, Shane, in your own words, what is Pasquino Productions? Um, so, P Pasquino Productions is a videography company. Um, we specialize mainly in weddings, um, but since then we branched out into real estate, small business, larger business, um, municipality work, kind of drone work, anything, all of the, the above branched into, you know, my business. But yeah, I would say weddings is kind of our bread and butter and where we started and kind of where we do most of our work. But yeah, we, we definitely branch out into everything I just mentioned. Very cool. Anything that requires a video, you can do it. Yep. I like to say, because um, some people aren't very, I guess, knowledgeable with video and, and videography. Um, and I, I like to tell people anything that you might be getting photos for, right. you can get video for. So, you know, people get engagement photos and they don't think of engagement video, video. But, but we do that. So, and real estate too, real estate photos, but video is becoming more popular for, for real estate agents. So yeah, anything that you can do a photo, you can do a video. Very cool. And how did you get started in this? Um, so I went to a sports broadcasting school in Toronto uh, called the College of Sports Media. So right. I studied there for two years. Um, after that, I graduated. I worked at, or I interned at TSN for a little bit as a um, editor. And then, wow. uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was fun working there, like seeing the, the ins and outs of, you know, how a big company works, sure. obviously. Um, and then I moved up to Thunder Bay. I accepted a job at Global Thunder Bay. Um, they call it TBT, TBT News up there. Okay. Um, so I was hired as their sports reporter and anchor. Um, so I worked full time up there shooting sports, you know, reporting on sports and then anchoring the weekend sports sets so that's fun yeah yeah and then it, it's such a small station up there that um, we didn't have our own cameraman camera women um, we just had to go to the stories and shoot it ourselves so that's kind of where I really fell in love with shooting and then putting the story together rather than being in front of the camera so okay. then I worked up there for just under two years um, it was fun I loved it up there but it wasn't really going anywhere kind of after that and I missed home so it's a, a long ways away uh, so yeah I kind of decided to move back home and open up Pasquino Productions. That's interesting because oftentimes you see the opposite of that right somebody's behind the camera they think that's where they want to be and then they transition to in front of the camera whereas you've done it in the reverse. Yeah. So bring us back to that moment where you decided okay I'm going to move home and open my own production studio. Did you have a plan? Did you even know how to do that? Um, not really. Like it, uh, I remember when I told my boss that I was um, leaving the station in Thunder Bay, he told me <laughs> that it wouldn't work. Uh -huh. I told him what I was going to do, like open up my own kind of production company. And he said it wouldn't work and that I would never be able to get back into the industry. Um, so it was a little scary, obviously. Like. Hearing that from him, I, I respected him, and I think he was maybe just trying to look out um, for maybe, the, yeah. the best in me. But yeah, I didn't really, I kind of hit the ground running when I moved home. I actually moved home in the spring and worked with one of my good buddies. He owned a lawn care business. Okay. So I worked with him for the summer, um, just trying to save up a bit of money of and to buy gear and stuff. And 
yeah, I, I, I had knowledge of, I guess, being a videographer and what I wanted to do. It was more the business side of it that I really had to, you know, learn and learn all the back end and of, of everything. Let's talk about that in general because you're working at a station in Thunder Bay. You're getting hands-on experience because you're kind of winging it as you're going, if you will, because you need the camera work to do your in front of camera work. Yeah. Did you pursue any kind of education after you moved back to figure out how to run the business or even the tricks of the trade for an actual videographer or are you all self-taught? Um, I would call it a YouTube education, oh, okay. um, which I think is becoming more and more popular, especially in my industry. Um, it's crazy what you can learn on YouTube and learn from other creators and, and yeah, so I kind of, um, you know, when I had questions and I wanted to reach out to people, I would go to YouTube and kind of just type in my question and then just watch from there. And that's where I learned um, a lot of my things. So I didn't end up going back to school. Okay. Um, I thought I already had enough knowledge of kind of how cameras work and all the aspects that go into shooting. I just needed to, you Define. know, a little bit, yeah, a little bit more kind of fine tuning and tips. And I just found that doing it and watching YouTube and like learning that way would be better than going back to school and maybe starting over on stuff that I already knew um, and maybe not learning as much as as I could so right. yeah so does the YouTube education apply to both the actual camera work and the business side of it um, no that would just be the actual camera work the okay. business side of it yeah uh, was a lot of I guess googling and I did do a a couple courses in Lindsay um, through the city of Kortha Lakes. Awesome. Um, it's called the Starter Program. So I think it was a six week program. Um, it got cut short for COVID. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think we did five out of the six weeks and it just kind of lays out the foundation of how you should run a business. So there was, I think 20 different new business owners in the course and they just kind of go over everything with you yeah and did yeah. you find that beneficial to starting your business or was it more of a just a little avenue to give you the confidence to do what you already knew how to do i found it beneficial for the business side of things for sure obviously um they're just going in there and they have kind of a set list and it's it's just every because there's so many different businesses sure. in the class at once so they can't focus on what your business is actually providing rather just setting up a business right. from from the ground up so yeah it definitely helped business wise it didn't really help like <laughs> for the creative wise but that was okay because that's kind of what i needed to kind of even get things like register for HST. you know hst things like that right so where it, it can kind of be you know scary if you've never done anything like that before so, absolutely yeah. and all the little details along the way that you maybe wouldn't have anticipated had you not had a conversation or that experience. So when you transitioned, you're getting this education, you're saving up money to buy the gear. Did you sit down and make a formal plan of, okay, this is how I'm going to build my demo and build a brand and have my business. This is the direction I'm gonna go into or were you just winging it? <laughs> it's bad to say. I probably maybe should have sat down and like done everything you just said, but um, it was a little bit of winging it and a lot of luck. Okay. Um, I think COVID actually helped my business because um, I kind of first started right when things were ramping up. Right. Um, and yeah, it just, I didn't really have a direction. I know, I knew that I wanted to shoot weddings and I thought that was going to be all that I was going to shoot. Um, but I ended up, I think in 2020, um, I did a video for Bob Cajun like downtown because okay. it was like Bob Cajun strong when COVID was first kind of ramping up and that video kind of went viral on Facebook and then from there like businesses started reaching out real estate agents started reaching out and it kind of blew up like the other side of my business sure. I didn't even know I was gonna have um, so now I kind of have like real estate small businesses along with weddings, I guess, four years later. It helped you diversify. Yeah, It kind of yeah. pushed you to, I guess. Yeah, like I didn't expect to come home and film, you know, like real estate. That I didn't really know anything about that of course. side of like videography and a bit of photography. Um, I thought it was just going to be mainly 
you know, shoot a wedding on the weekend, edit it, shoot another wedding, edit it. But yeah, it's, it kind of put me in all different directions. So, and I didn't plan any of, any of that. It literally all came from that one video that I shot. And why do you think you initially targeted weddings? Because it was the easiest or you had an interest in it? Yeah, I just, I always kind of liked watching wedding videos more for the story. Um, like I like to tell with my couples, I like to try and include the speeches, um, include parts of you know the ceremony to try and tell their story throughout the day. Cool. So I always liked that aspect of it. And I think, especially around the Kawarthas and the Durham region, it's still a bit of a niche. Um, like photography is obviously booming and there's a lot of great photographers out there, but there isn't as many videographers out there. Right. So I kind of saw that there was a need for that in our area and kind of targeted that. Makes sense. Yeah. And so you see the need, you start with the idea that you're going to be in weddings. How did you build up your, I guess, demo reel to then get business? Did you have a strategy for how you were going to do that? I did have a bit of a strategy for that. Um, so the first wedding I ever shot was in September of 2019. And from there, I did a teaser and a full wedding video for the couple. Okay. Um, and I pumped out a lot of it on Facebook with ads and Instagram with ads as well. And I found that that's been a great tool for me, social media wise. I don't really have like a reel okay. for weddings. I just have like my Instagram page and my Facebook and my YouTube. Um, and I found that social media has kind of helped me get my content out there. And it's, yeah. It's helping fuel you forward. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to using that footage for ads and stuff like that, one of the big conversations we have around photography is who actually owns the photo? Is it the person that takes the image or is it the subject behind the camera? With videography, is it the same kind of philosophy as the videographer owns the content or how does that work? It all depends. So with my weddings, um, all my couples sign a contract. Um, so I do own the footage okay. and I do have the right to use it for promotional promotional material. Sorry okay. about that. That's okay. Um, but I always ask them first before I put anything out and they always see it. Like I don't put anything out without them okay. seeing it. Um, I, I just don't want them to be maybe mad if they of don't course. like a certain, a certain way they look or, you know, a certain part of the video. Um, so yeah. I do own it all, but I let them have control as well. And then for bigger contracts, say we shoot for, you know, a muni municipality, we shoot for the city of Kortha Lakes a lot. Um, it depends on the contract. So sometimes I own stuff, sometimes I shoot and they own it all. It, it kind of, it's different for every, right. every project. And how did you figure out the pricing structure for that? Did you have any idea of how you were going to set that out? No, I didn't. And it's still something that I, I, I don't, wouldn't say struggle, but I still work on my pricing a lot. Um, again, I, I, I kind of reached out to other people in the industry, just asking them questions about their pricing because um, it's tough. I've never been a business owner before and it's not something like I'm not married, so I never had to plan a wedding. So I don't know how much, you know, stuff like this cost or like hourly rates or, or anything like that. So um, I kind of just started at what I felt was fair for what I was giving, you know, a business or couples. And now I kind of have it a bit more down to a science, so to say. Okay. Um, but yeah, it prices obviously you know, every year things fluctuate. So yeah, um, it's kind of lost my train of thought That's there, okay. sorry. You know what? That's totally all right because yeah. it makes sense. You got to go with the momentum. Now, don't go anywhere. We will be right back after this break. <laughs> This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details.
You're watching an interesting local show on Rogers TV and you want to know more. That's when you head to RogersTV.com. Our website provides more information about our programs, our hosts, our schedule, and about how you too can get involved with Rogers TV. Visit us online at RogersTV.com. Hi, my name's Scott Dennis, host of the Sports Report here on Rogers TV Durham. Do you love sports? So do I, and we're talking about it anywhere from the Oshawa Generals to College University to amateur sport. Make sure you tune in here, only on Rogers TV Durham. Our family used to be so fun. Now my brother takes care of me. I miss mom and dad being around more. Mom says things are going to get better. Welcome back to Modern Business, the show that bridges the gap between the viewer and the entrepreneur or market maker. Today we are joined by Shane Pasquino of Pasquino Productions. Now Shane, before we left off for the break, we were talking about figuring out your pricing structure and you were saying that you're organically figuring it out as you go. So you're bringing in obviously new leads to create these videos to then pump them out to the world. When you first started, what did you do to attract leads and get the business? Um, I tried to be different in, I guess, how we shot and what content we produce. Just, I wanted people to watch the videos and then say, I would like something like that for myself. Right. Uh, whether it's a wedding or you know, a business or they're selling their house with a real estate video, I kind of wanted to connect them to make them feel like I could see myself with something like that. Um, so I guess the way we kind of produced the content and then pushed it out kind of attracted more people to then, you know, contact me for, for gigs. So when you, when you speak about pushing out, what are you pushing out on? Um, so we're using, I said, in, or I would say Instagram's our number one tool. Okay. Um, a lot of our reels, like sometimes we put out, you know, a 10 to 15 second wedding reel and we can get up to 15,000 wow. views, which it's crazy to think, even if you get a couple hundred views, I always think of it as if you're in a room with a couple hundred people seeing, you know, what you're doing, what you're producing, what you're trying to sell right. essentially, that would be awesome. So even when it gets into the thousands, that's kind of how I think if I was in a room with a thousand people, they're, they're seeing this. Sometimes it's hard because there's a disconnect because you don't see those people of watching course. your content, but that's kind of how I look at it. So Instagram's definitely been our biggest tool. And then I have our website linked right into our Instagram and okay. people usually reach out right through there. And how early on in the process did you make the website? Um, that was like the number one thing I did actually. Okay. One of my younger brother's buddies um, does a bit of web design, so I got him to create the website for us. And then I, yeah, I had the website before we launched the business. Okay. I just wanted to be able to launch the business with the website all ready to go. And that's interesting because one thing I'm finding interviewing younger entrepreneurs is a lot of them are starting their businesses on Instagram and then when they feel like they've taken off they launch a website so do you remember what drove you to have the website did you feel that it was just important or I think just it was a good place for people to reach out to me um, and then the website all comes back to my phone there's an app on my phone so when people reach out through the website it goes right to my phone and I just felt it was a better way instead of using Instagram DMs or Facebook DMs, which we still do use sure. as well, but the website kind of keeps it a bit cleaner. And if someone is asking for some of our work, um, I'll link them to the website, which then has all the links to our social media as well. So it kind of the website feeds back to all of our socials, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. Okay, so primarily website and Instagram, those are your main lead generators. And yeah. then after that, would you say that it's all word of mouth from people who have either worked for you or, or with you, sorry, or sent your video out? 
Yeah, I think word of mouth is huge. Um, every year we get, I'd say now, kind of the fall leading up into Christmas time is when we get a lot of our wedding bookings. Okay. And we'll have people reach out and they'll say, oh, you shot so-and-so's wedding last year. I was there. Like, I watched how you worked with the couple and things like right. that. Um, or I heard from my friends that they were at a wedding um, and you were really great. Kind of things like that. So word of mouth is definitely huge um, in, in a business like mine. Interesting. And speaking of people seeing you at weddings and then wanting to hire you and stuff, how is it working with other ven vendors at those big events? Do you find yourself working with the photographer and the florist and all that to cultivate the mood for your videos? Or how does that relationship work? You definitely have to work with the other vendors. Um, I like to think of it as your one big team for the day, whether you've worked with them before or you're just meeting them there that morning. Because um, it all comes back to the couple. You want right. the couple to have you know, the best day they can possibly have. And if you're butting heads with another vendor, it's not taking away from what you're doing or what the other vendor's doing. It's ultimately taking away from the couple. So yeah, I like to try and work together as one big team. And I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time, it it's you know, one big team and a lot of That's awesome. like, smiles. Yeah. Well, because you all have the same end goal at the end of the day is to make a wonderful product for that couple. Exactly. Like I don't want, if I've never met the photographer before, it doesn't matter because I still want those photos to be great for right. the couple. And most photographers, like I said, 99% are the same. They want the video to be great uh, no matter what, because it all comes back to the couple. Yeah. So it's a lot of, a lot of teamwork. I like to call it run and gun shooting okay. um, because it's uh, definitely a busy day, you know, six to 10 hours of wow. a wedding day and then it's kind of over. So you want to get as much as you can, but you want, you know, the photographer to get as much as they can. You want the DJ to have the best audio for them for their right. dances and their ceremony. And yeah, if we all work together, then it just reflects back on, on everyone. And when you go to create a wedding video, are you setting a mood board before with the couple to say, okay, this is how I think the journey is gonna go? Or do you show up day of, take a bunch of clips, and then kind of decide on the storyline after? So we send out a, a pre-wedding checklist, okay. and it kind of goes through like, you know, would you rather have mainly just you guys, or do you want a lot of family involved? And then I have a bunch of questions, and it kind of helps me gauge, okay, they want it just about them and very little about their guests or vice versa. I ask them, what do you need to be in the video? What don't you want in the video? And then from there, I kind of am putting the video together in my head as the day goes on. Okay. And then I get home and kind of start putting it together from there, trying to tell the story. And I try and tell a story. Um, it's not just like, a, I think some people think wedding videos are just clips with music and that's it, which right. is just, that would just be mainly like a moving slideshow in my mind. Um, I try and tell every couple's story, whether it's through the speeches or their vows or anything Whatever's really. Whatever's happening yeah. that day. And do you think that's because of the creative nature of what you were doing before being in front of the camera and having to be a storyteller or is this something that you developed along the way? No, I definitely think it's from being a reporter before and okay. always, you know, having to tell a story and bring something to light. I think that's definitely helped me stand out from maybe other wedding videographers is that I'm always trying to tell that, that story. Very cool. Now, when you launched your business and now that you're kind of into the full swing of things, do you ever look back and think, wow, I never expected that to happen? in my career this early. Is there any moment that's just had you go, wow? Yeah, it's actually, um, I had it yesterday. Wow. I, uh, okay. I just woke up, so Saturday was our last wedding um, of the year, so around the end of October. Okay. Um, and we hit 40 weddings this year. So we ended up filming 40 weddings. So 2019 was our first wedding. We did one <laughs> wedding. Uh, 2020, I think we did eight. And then from there, we just keep growing and growing. And this year we did 40. So I kind of, I was just having a coffee in the morning and just That's thought, incredible. holy, like, this is crazy, you know, how many people, and it, 
it's it's not just good for me it's great for like I'm very happy to work with these couples and on the happiest days you know of their lives and kind of bring them that content and do you ever think back to the station manager that doubted you and think <laughs> I have 40 now <laughs> I Look do I do he is uh, since retired he helped me out a lot of course um, but yeah he was uh, I think he was just maybe a little salty because I did a lot up in Thunder Bay for him and he, he had to hire of someone course. else. So. But it's still always a nice feeling to one, be accomplished and two, to prove a narrative wrong. Yeah, for right. sure. And it did scare me a little when he was like, you'll never get back into this industry because obviously my fallback would be trying to get back sure. into and that industry. And yeah, yeah. It's safe to say I probably won't ever go back into the industry. Hey, so. if, you, if you do a TV show every once in a while, that's okay. Too. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what would you say has been your biggest challenge? Um, I think my biggest challenge has been maybe just trying to, you're always going to have doubters, um, whether it's people that you care about or care about you. And I think at the end of the day, it's not, they, they don't think, you can't succeed but maybe they don't think it's going to be you know something you can sustain for the rest of your life and you kind of have to block that out just like that station manager right. um, block that out and prove prove people wrong i know when i first started out um i had even you know people who were close to me saying is this really going to work and you know do you think like you can make a living off this but right. then on the other side of the table, um, I had a lot of family and friends that said, like, you know, I know you can do this and it's you're going to be successful. So I guess it's just like the highs and the lows and kind of dealing, dealing with that. Figuring it out as you go. Yeah. And is there a big risk you've taken in your career aside from launching the business? Have you filmed a video that you maybe never thought you would have filmed or you took a job that you had no context for? Um, I, I think the biggest risk would be moving home from Thunder Bay and taking, you know, a, I had a steady income, a good job, doing what I went to school to do, um, to taking that risk to, you know, move home and um, kind of perfect ending my off air or on air jersey journey, journey. Sorry, and uh, yeah, coming home and there. doing it. Yeah. Do you have a trade tip for our audience today? Yes, I do. So my trade tip would be when I first started out, um, I watched a lot of YouTube and I reached out to a lot of other creators, whether it be on Instagram or, or Facebook or email. And I would say at first I was very nervous to reach out to people because I didn't want to be, you know, annoying. Sure. And then, you know, say they look at my stuff and I know it's not as good as theirs maybe yet. Um, but everyone I reached out to was always more than happy to, to help me out with questions. And it, it really helped kind of elevate my business. And now I have, you know, younger videographers reaching out to me with Perfect. those same questions. And I love that. I love getting emails, Instagram awesome. DMs, and I love being able to answer their questions. That's great. Shane, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been another edition of Modern Business. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and we'll be back next time. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. Come for you.